Hey everybody, out here with Becoming Ultra. Gonna go run the Desert Rats 50K today and uh, just show you guys a little bit what it's all about. I'm gonna try to do something every mile just to show you the train. Give you a little description, kind of what you need out here. As you can see, it is a friggin' beautiful morning. And this is the start. So you start here in this parking lot and you head out directly on this dirt road out here. All right, first half mile. I'm not gonna break it down this good, but nice, easy, flat. You get into about a probably five, four or five percent grade. So I can see a lot of people trying to push too hard. Up here I can see it's about eight or nine. So my recommendation would be Loosen up in that first half mile. Power hike some of these ups in the beginning if you're a newbie. If you're strong, you're gonna be able to run these just fine. But if you got some nerves and you wanna just settle in, this is a great time to do it before you get on the single track. So you can see right here, some of the grade. Awesome sunrise, hopefully you guys just get that as well. Alright, this is our first intersection. You're coming off the dirt road, head up to more fun. This is your first legitimate hill. I would, for most people, you need a power hike this thing. A couple questions early on in these races for effort, hill work. We all know we should go out slower than what we want to. That's been overly documented by every coach in America. But asking the question of can you run the hill or should you run the hill early on, that's where we need to be. And uh, I have a friend, Pam Smith, who's an amazing ultra runner. Before I ran my first 100, she gave me some great advice. She said, if you're gonna be walking a hill at mile 80, then you need to be walking that same hill at mile four or five. And that goes with any ultra. So this hill, I would definitely be walking at mile 29. So I'm gonna walk it today. I think if you can take that mentality into the race, you're gonna enjoy your day a lot more. Right around mile one, you guys get up to this parking lot, there'll be tons of volunteers. You shoot past that gate, we're heading up to more fun trail. Awesome mountain biking trail, for the record. By now, the field will probably thin out pretty good. That last little climb, and a couple of the little rollers on the dirt road down there, spaces people out pretty well. But we're about to get to the fun stuff. Got a few miles of single track before the first aid station. And uh, just gonna kinda navigate it nice and easy. Hike anything over five or 6%. Try easy jog everything else. Alright, we're just under mile two here. We're on more fun on the north side. Been in the shade for a little bit. The view is amazing. You can see the Grand Mesa, Mount Garfield, and uh, it's semi-technical. Big rocks and dirt, nothing, nothing crazy. But once you get to this little crest here, it's really runnable. So if you're confident with your technical skills, this is a good time to open it up a little bit. Stay right. All right, we're just past mile two. And what you'll notice is you can see the hills over there. You're gonna be going up those. First sustained climb of the day. It's not too bad, but it's definitely a spot to power hike for a little bit. Promise you there's tons 
of runnable stuff out here, so don't waste it early, y'all. At about 2.2 right now. All right, you guys, mile two and a half over the big canyon here. To the right of the Colorado River, we'll be going over there. Uh, I want to say mile, just under mile 18 or so. So it's kind of cool that you can see it from this far away. We're almost at the top of more fun. It is the highest, if not the highest point of the whole day, you can see here. You kind of go under a little saddle, pop back up, then there's a big old descent coming up. But if you come, if you got here and your legs are coming good, it's a really good sign. You need to put in that time for that part of the training. It's just big slick rock and slabs up here, as you can see. But it gets pretty flow here in a minute. So we'll be able to run and put in some uh, non-walking miles, non-power hiking miles here in a second. That is a money shot. Alright, mile three. Right on more fun over looking a lot of the trails you're gonna be hitting later on today. Down in the valley there. It's funny because this looks high. But when you're down there, the cliffs you're overlooking look high too. So if you like big sweeping views, you're gonna love this part. But uh, from mile two and a half to now has been awesome. Very runnable, so enjoy that. All right, y'all, a little strategy for you here. A little mental, a little mental aspect of this effort. Just under four miles right now. It's some of the downhill coming off of more, more fun and semi-technical. It's spotty. I think it'll definitely, uh, the field will definitely spread out by this point because you have a couple good climbs in the first three miles you get about a little over 800 feet. Then you start coming down and based on skill level of different runners, the downhill spreads people out just as well. But I know the tendency after a few miles is to start to get antsy and want to rush a little bit. And if you can handle this downhill and it doesn't bother you, Go for it. I live here. I run this stuff all the time. This doesn't seem that technical, but technical's pretty subjective. I've worked with race directors from coast to coast, and every single every single RD I've talked to says their course is technical, whether it's in Florida, Virginia, Oregon, Texas, everyone's technical. So it's just a subjective thing. Um, my money goes on East Coast for the most technical trails, but that's a different discussion. Anyways, you're starting to get antsy here. Trust me, when you get down off of more fun, there is so much runnable stuff on this course. Mary's Loop, Rustler's Loop, it's all really, really clean. Pretty flat for, mo for the most part, little rollers. We've already got a quarter of the vert done in the first three or four miles. So that's always a good sign too. So be patient, don't rush yourself, run the stuff you can run. But realize if you save a little bit now, you're gonna have a lot more in the tank for that stuff that's really runnable. You're gonna see here in a minute. All right, right at mile four, almost exactly. You got this little intersection. You take your right, <coughs> keep descending. It's pretty nice downhill here. Mile four and a half. Uh, I think a lot of you guys are gonna find your stride on this downhill. Right now it's a little technical, but for the most part, it's pretty clean. But the cool thing about this, as you can see, where those cars are right there, maybe you can't see it on the GoPro, uh, but that's your first aid station coming up. So you're really close to getting some nutrition and fueling and some high fives over there. Fun fact, favorite time to eat. Favorite time to eat is on technical downhill because pace is slow pretty naturally, but you're not working so hard. That you're choking every other bite. A lot of people like to eat on uphill, which is fine, but man, it's freaking tough when you're working. Don't like to waste the flats for eating unless you have to. But I don't. I generally eat on the run. So get into the aid station, grab what you need, throw it in your pockets, throw it in some Ziploc baggies, spend a minute there, whatever the minimum time you can spend there is, 
And even if you're walking slow while you eat, you're still not wasting time sedentary. So that's a fun fact. This is medium technicality slam the PB and J. Mile five. All right, y'all, this is the parking lot for first aid station. This is my aid station. We, we, you're gonna get a lot more love than me. But anyway, you're gonna get your food, head down this road to Rustler's Loop, and then you're gonna come back here in about four miles. So this is gonna be aid station one and two. Mile six. Nothing crazy here. Running it. We are a little over 10K. Just starting Rustler's Loop. There's a good little, I don't know, third of a mile climb right when you get into this thing. It's just gravel, but it'll get you a little bit, especially if you just chugged a bunch of fluids like I did. Uh, yeah, I'm doing this thing without a pack for the first 11 or 12 miles, and then I'll grab my pack and have better hydration options. But you'll be climbing up that, that's the start of Mary's Loop, the top of that cliff over there, at about mile 11 or 12, don't quote me on that. But you're about to get some amazing views on this loop. It's an awesome place to mountain bike to. All right, runnable, let's hit it. All right, y'all remember all that technical stuff that was really hard in the beginning? Well, now we're on a quarter inch of sand. And as smooth as you possibly get. And it's time to make up a little bit of time if you got the fitness, so. Time to run when you get to Russell's Loop. Just run mile, mile seven right now. Mile seven. First big view of the Colorado River. Coming up. You're probably gonna wanna take a picture here. About as cool as it gets, check that view out. All right, mile eight. And uh, we're about to go away from the Colorado River for a while. As you can tell, the last couple miles, the dirt's changed colors, it's a little darker red. Really, really easy to run this part. Not much technicality on rustlers. So you guys should be moving pretty well. Mile nine, coming up to the base of these cliffs that we'll be running up here in about two miles. And uh, the wife's calling. All right, y'all, we are back at the aid station number two. 10 miles, almost exactly. And then we're gonna head back down the road towards Rustlers and head up Mary's Loop, which you'll see here in a minute. All right, a little past mile 10, hitting Mary's Loop. A uh, nice little half mile or so climb here. It's right after your second aid station. So, uh, probably be digesting, it's a good time to snack a little bit. D-layer, get into your orange gear that you didn't know you had so much of. And uh, watch out for the mountain bikers, there's a lot out here. And this is the part on mile two and three that we talked about you wanted to save your legs for. It's basically a sidewalk in the desert. Hardly anything in the way. Almost completely flat. It's time to make up some time here. Mile 11. Awesome views. This is one of my favorite spots. You turn the corner, there's Horse Thief Canyon, and you just see this ridge across the way. You were up there earlier on more fun. You won't be going down and that stuff, but like I said, this marriage part is just cruising for a while. All right, here we are, mile 12. 
It's right at the intersection of Mary's and Wrangler's. You're gonna stand Mary's here. Still running this cliff edge, but plenty of space between us and the cliffs. Here, I'll show you. Plenty of space, but it goes down there pretty quick. Probably 150 feet. But yeah, it's a nice groove right now. Just gonna keep pushing more of the same of this for a while. All right, we are at mile 13.3 ish. I'm guessing this is Pizza Overlook. Looks like a slice of pizza, I guess. I don't know. It's a pepperoni down there. Cool spot. Check out this view. Just almost 14 miles here. Freaking epic. Epic. Okay, we're finally getting off of Mary's. We're going to head on to Steve's loop. A few miles of that, and then we'll be heading back that way for 8th station. But this is a cool, flowy little two or three miles. Right around 14.2 on my watch here. So be on the lookout for that. I'm sure it'll be marked really well. Mile 14 and a half. If you don't like heights, that is a legit drop. But you got five yards, 15 feet. Yeah, 12 feet. But visually, it's pretty stunning. Mile 15, everybody. Sweet views. Uh, that little cliff band looks pretty sweet. And if I wasn't running this thing, I would probably go out there because that's pretty cool. But time is of the essence. I got some runners I'm meeting in a little bit. Mile 16. Sweet rock outcropping. Just the Colorado River showing off today. All right, about mile 16.3. Got our first real climb in quite a while. It's probably been five miles since we've climbed it all. But we gotta get up to the next level of these. All right, y'all, update on that little climb. At mile 16 and a half or so, it was pretty punchy. I thought it was gonna be a little bit longer, it's maybe a quarter to a third of a mile. And then you get back, you kind of get on this next ledge and it's back to nice flowy running stuff. Mile 17. Getting close to the next aid station. On their site it says 16.8, but it's GPS. Everybody's shows a little different out here. Mile 17 and a quarter. This is that Steve's loop that we ran earlier. Looks really cool from up here. Mile 18, we're about to start climbing here. I know uh, on the site it says that, what, 16.8 is this fourth aid station here at Crossroads. But my GPS is 18 right now, and I'm about not even a quarter mile away. So I'll compare when I get back to the computer, but it doesn't really matter. Still covering the course. Nothing special here, but you were about to climb up some mountains here. Right there. Okay, right there's your crossroads aid station. We're gonna head up that trail. I'll show you a little bit more. Here's my aid station. Don't be like my GoPro. Don't be like him. He didn't fuel up well enough. So he's not gonna continue. Gotta hide that guy really good. But yeah, for me, I just had two aid stations. It's plenty for me. Uh, so five will be plenty for you, more than likely. About to climb. Okay, this is where the big aid station is for the race. You guys are gonna come up here and hit lines loop to the left. And this is where the little climb starts. Boom, Steve's loop, we just did that. We're right here. We're gonna go all the way. It's Troy built, back up this bad boy, across down Hawkeye Trail where the party is, finish line. Look familiar? It's freaking gorgeous. I'm eating nuts and they're not even spicy. I don't know what to do. Mile 19. All right, we got mile 20 here. Does not disappoint. We are overlooking 
on some amazing single track overlooking the Colorado for a little while longer. Enjoy it while you can there. Uh, we start moving away from the water a little bit up here. But the views are just, make sure you look back every, every once in a while. For me, it's either these or oranges for the best ultra or endurance effort. Snacky. Fiber in these kind of probably tilts it towards oranges maybe, but man, it's like candy, baby. All right, little mile, little after mile 20 here. And we got a nice little climb. It's not too long. You can see lines loop there. I won't go straight up this bad boy. So get that power hike on and you should be good to go. It gets pretty rolly up here. You'll see in a bit. We're on the Troy built turn off here. My watch says 20.7. You can see what it looks like. You'll be coming back on lion's loop, but you won't come all the way back down here. But if you want to make up any time, this is a good spot to do it. It's kind of flowy for a while. It's four miles to the next aid station from here. I've run this a bunch. And compared to after the next aid station, you got a legit climb. So it's going to zap those legs a little bit. So whatever you got at mile 20, 21, wherever we are exactly right here, this is the time to use it up a little bit. And then when you get to the top of Mac Ridge, which we'll talk about in a little bit, you have some other opportunities, but the last mile or so is, is a good switch back downhill. If your legs are gone, you're not going to be able to bomb it. So it's pretty comical watching from the finish line. And I'm sure I'll look the same here in a few minutes. Mile 21. No bikers out here. No people out here. No sounds except for airplanes. Every once in a while, you gotta stop. And listen to your heartbeat, <laughs> literally, pretty wild. Mile 22, on some slick rock, it's been nice and flowy. Nice little calm before the storm, which will be Lion's Loop, I believe it's called. Well, I forgot to tell y'all my favorite part about mile 22 is that your single digits left. Psychologically, that helps a bunch. I'm pretty uh, stoked for y'all because this is a, uh, there's hardly ever anybody out here. Race day, you should have a little bit more energy, but man, I'm solo in it today. I got some provisions coming from some uh, familia. A little moral support's gonna be nice, but can't complain. Feeling pretty good. Mile 23. You are almost to the next aid station. We're at 23.2. Don't mess up. And I don't know how you would do this, but don't go left. It's gonna take you down there. Then you're gonna have to come back up. Just stay up high, get a little climb coming up. All right, mile 23.5, you got a nice climb here. And uh, don't kill yourself on this. It's dependent on your fitness level. If you can run it, you're in the top 5%. That's awesome. But there's a lot of downhill and flat left. If you're new at this or you're just figuring out how to pace, you're probably gonna wanna power hike this part. Mile 24. Really close to the next aid station, which will be nice for you all. Head towards I-70. All right, the trail spits you out right there. Next aid station is where that truck is up there, right around 24, 25 miles. Provisions are on the way. Moral support. That's what aid stations are for. High fives, high fives, matching boys. Oh, crazy dog. How y'all doing? All right, y'all. Mile 24.7, you can see the lion's loop sign right here. This is 
gonna be a race station. And then we're going up that big boy for a nice mean climb. At right about mile 24.8, quarter mile after the aid station Troy built. There's a little view of the climb. It's kind of a mean, mean way to go at late 20s, but part of the deal. So and then cool. we have a we have a wife sighting and a couple kids sighting. Got the 12 and 10 year old and the dog out. Gotta get used to having them in my in my space. Mile 25, middle of the mean climb. That is all. 25 and a half. There is a false summit on this climb, y'all. So you're gonna get here and you're gonna see a little more action. It's not too bad though. But make sure you uh, give your RDs a hug or a smack, depending on how you feel about this. 26, right at the top. Started at the bottom and we've made it to this point. A little Drake action there. But uh, we have some nerd sightings, and some children's sightings. Not much going on here, pretty runnable if you want to. We're just kind of family time in it now though. Fork in the road. Mac Ridge, 26.5. You guys have gone a quarter of a mile. How far is your sofa? 26 and a half. 26. Oh, that's what I've done. Probably a mile and a half. Good boy gets the water first. No, don't let him lick it. I'm not. I forgot his cup. I had his little cup thing. So I guess. He's going to choke because dogs don't drink like that. You want to do it ultra? Wait a minute. jug. Oh, there we go. Oh, wait. Oh, no. Okay. One more time. I'm past the marathon. Can I jog? One second. Cool. All right, everybody, mile 27, almost to Mac Ridge. Up here about a quarter mile, we're gonna take a left on Mac Ridge, and then it's pretty much home free. We got a bunch of switchbacks on the way down, a few miles left, but we're at the top. It's pretty breezy up here. The panorama's pretty amazing, as you can see. So enjoy it before the last descent. All right, y'all, we're at the top of Mac Ridge. It was amazing. He's been running over the Colorado River all day long, but this really, really is just a few steps above. I mean, probably a thousand feet above the Colorado River right now, so you've climbed all the way up here. Mac Ridge sign is right here. We're going to go down Mac Ridge, which you can see that big cliff band over there is Mac Ridge. So we're going to go run the top of that ridge, and at some point on that ridge, we're going to switch back all the way down to the start. So the end is near. It's pretty sweet. Mac Ridge, if you are scared of heights, this one might get you a little bit. Our dog likes birds. We had to put him on leash even though he's great. But uh, yeah, you got a little bit of this for a while. Do not mess around on Mac Ridge. But the views, though, check him out. Look at that view right there. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's your mom, West. What is that saying? She's an enigma wrapped in an anomaly. One of the cool things I hear is the dirt changes colors a lot. We've had red, white, that'd be below the cliff west. And this is like black, gray, kind of cool. Mile 28, here to go. Getting away from the ridge of the Mac Ridge into some cover. Kind of get through it from the breeze, which is nice. And you got a big old two mile downhill. Yeah. 28.3, we got a decision to make. We can finish the race and go down Hawkeye, or we can go straight. Which would be a lot more miles. Which will be not what you want to do at this point. So you want to hit that Hawkeye trail. A lot of switchbacks on the way down. It's a fun 
fun way to finish a race if your legs are still there. It's a hilarious way to finish if they're not. All right, we're going down Hawkeye. Two miles left. Really cool features, but it's technical. Gonna bust it. Coming down, mile 29. Descending 500 more feet. Finish line is right where those cars are. Mile 30. Mile 30. Switchbacks. Last descent coming up. moment you're waiting for. Don't lose focus. There's plenty of big old rocks still. But we got parking lot, which is the finish line right there. So close. All right, so I hit 31. A few hundred yards from the parking lot. Hopefully that's accurate, but on the stretch is it. 31 miles. Slow, chill day out here. Lots of videos. But this will be a little more festive next time you see the spot. Thanks for coming along. Finishers number one. Finisher number two. Okay, he's trying to stab me with that. Let's see, get kicked in the butt. Oh. I've come to the conclusion that uh, you racers, the little fancy aid stations, are going to do a lot better than me because I got to go out and half a mile or two or three quarters of a mile out to get my aid station bag that I set up for myself just sitting in the car for 10 minutes before doing this is a little rough but hey we're gonna get ourselves about 33 miles a day how about that